My favorite Christmas, it you know, it reminds me of my family. You know, is uh, Christmas Vacation. <laughs> oh my I goodness, mean, that's the one I <laughs> we watched. have seen that. A that's few the times, one I too. watch the most. Probably, yeah. Yeah. it's always on TV, and it's just great but- to watch. <laughs> I just love like how the mood. I feel like I get in that mood. He gets in, and he's just chainsawing. He's like, Rrr. there's so <laughs> many Fixed things. It. Like <laughs> when the turkey just collapses, you know, or the- save the neck for me, Clark. Our goal in this podcast is to know Jesus better and by the power of his spirit, do better so together we can be a little better. Hey, welcome to A Little Better. I'm here with the normal crew and we got this cool new sign if you're watching yes. on YouTube. Look at yes. That. Shout out to producer Taylor. Um, if you, this is week two of a series called Where Are You Christmas? Last week there was a malfunction. Drew messed up and so we couldn't <laughs> publish it. I'm just kidding. That's not what happened. But we uh, we won't mention one. No, we won't no mention names. one. No yeah. names. Hit a no, bus with anyone. No name. Blameless you know. autopsies. That's right. Blameless autopsies. It does rhyme with my uh, son's name, Baylor. Just for the record. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, moving, moving on though. Moving I mean, right along. Drew's it is Christmas time. It's Christmas week that's two. Of Where Christmas. are you, Christmas? Uh, I got the opportunity to teach in week two of Where Are You, Christmas. I'll help you. Sermon in sixty. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So Ooh. my my whole point was. Um, you know, it's the innkeeper's response because this this series is really looking at the sideline characters of Christmas. Is kind of the language we kept using in sermon writing. So I looked mm-hmm. at the innkeeper. Shocker, there's not an innkeeper, but it's the family <laughs> who own the home uh, that Jesus was born into, and their lack of a response um, to Christmas. And you know how 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 are we responding even though we're really close to, to Jesus and the traditions and the churchy things? Like, do we mm-hmm. really embrace the true meaning? And what I wanted people to do is slow down and, and embrace Jesus for who he is and what he can do and has done in their life. So yeah, that was my sermon in 24 seconds. I'll jump in. I think one of the things we could do like to start, because let's be honest, guys, this podcast is just us and our crazy minds thinking That's of right. things. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to talk about like, okay, we, we talk about, we show the, the house, the first century house yeah. and most likely the evidence points to Jesus being born in a basement, right? right. Or in yeah. the, the food, the, the animal storage place. Yeah. And, the and working the, area yeah. of the family home. The lower yeah. tier part yeah. of the first century home. What are the other, like, okay, let's say someone like, like, okay, yeah, but is there any other options? Yeah. What are the other options out there? The other option was like the cold, wet barn, but historically, like that's that's nowhere. That's, is there any like, first uh, century barns out there? There's not any first century <laughs> yeah. barns out there. I've heard of other theologians who proposed there were caves in yes. the mountain clefts. We uh, see a lot during that that time period, based mm-hmm. on where Jesus is born. You know, mm-hmm. is there there's some caves that they, well they hunker down in a cave. Well, that doesn't make sense with the word that is. The word that is used according to Luke is a guest room, which the location of a guest room would be in a modern or a current day home um, in that regard. Now, whose home that is is a really good question, I feel mm-hmm. like. Um, mm-hmm. And so, but most but, likely a relative, you yeah, said. of. Jo- Joseph? Joseph, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Joseph. Why? Because it, oh, because it's his lineage that takes them to Bethlehem. Right. Yeah, there there are some people who think, well, well, it could have been uh, Elizabeth and Zachariah. Sure, or Zach, is that, did I say that right? Mm. Zachariah. Yeah, Elizabeth, like yeah. because they lived very close to Parents that region. Of John the Baptist. Well, I mean, Parents if, if we Baptist, put it yeah. in modern day context, right? Let's just say we all have to do the same thing Mary right. and Joseph are doing. You got to mm-hmm. go back to your hometown. Who, who are you going to stay with? The yeah. first logical explanation is some sort of family. Now, mm-hmm. your first choice is probably taken up because you're the favorite got that place, right? Or yeah. your mom and dad, they have, they're full. <laughs> Which and is so why you, I tried to use the analogy of like, it's the, like, okay, it's the holiday times. You're all going back home. Yes. You have brothers and sisters. You have siblings. And, and remember, and, like, there's probably a lot of family of Joseph that still lives where he, he grew up. It's not like America today where most people, they graduate college and they move all over the place. Mm-hmm. Most people stayed in the general vicinity mm-hmm. of where they were born, right? They were, right. You know, airplanes didn't exist this time mm-hmm. frame, so travel was completely different. So you were in a general vicinity. You probably had a lot of family in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So them coming home, they're probably staying with some form. I would suggest, based off the story, it's not, it's not probably their first or second option. It's probably a mm-hmm. distant relative. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think it's more relatable to, to, cause I, you know, we've gone to our kids home where maybe they don't have room for us because our other kids are there. So we stay close by or we're on the air mattress, you know, um, uh, the good old to, air mattress uh, <laughs> this time of year, it gets cold. Yeah. That air gets cold. I love the picture of like the movie home alone though. Right. In home alone, yeah, they have the great. big house with all the, uh, yep. the, the relatives with the, the, all the kids and, and, cousins, and you know, the cousins, everybody's there. They're all piling in. They're like, wait, where do I have to sleep? You know, where am I sleeping to die? And that's that's a good picture of like, well, that room was full, and so the only room left is you're going downstairs. Apparently, the the main living room was was packed out. They're like, well, you're not giving birth here. <laughs> um, and Kenneth E. Bailey, Drew, it's a book we've talked about a lot. Um, but he, Jesus through Middle Eastern eyes, great book. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a really good book to to put the Gospels in its context. Uh, it's, he lived in I think Israel for like twenty plus years, and so he has a really good grasp on like mm. what is that. In his book, he kind of like cites a, a reference that that says uh, for for Middle Eastern women in that day. That was a common. That was a common place to give birth, uh, not like the primary. Like, oh yeah, uh, like go go give birth down where the manger is. But for if you think of like the Mosaic Law of yeah. purity and cleanliness, mm-hmm. yep. um, you know the what happens at birth is not a clean event. It is messy in, in that regard. It's it's messy, and so it's easier to clean up that region of the house versus like Mm -hmm. the main living quarters or the guest room. So it would be common like, Hey, go downstairs, give birth. The manger, the stone feeding trough actually makes a great cradle for a new infant. (laughs) It's a really good size. It's, uh, you know, wrap them in cloth, clean it up and lay the baby in there. Um, Another thing I wasn't able to draw out, but I think it's a very good argument for why Jesus was born in a family home and not like in a cave or a barn is when the shepherds show up, uh, this is Kenneth E. Bailey has this argument too, which Mm -hmm. makes you really think is like, how terrible of human beings are they if Mary and Joseph and newborn baby Jesus are in a cold, wet barn or cold, wet cave? And they're like, woo, worship. And they're like, Bye guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's if they just leave them where they're at. Like if if any mm-hmm. of us right go and see in a barn or in a cave or at a bus stop, like this woman <laughs> and her <laughs> husband who just gave birth to this baby, and mm-hmm. we don't do anything about that. Like you're like, oh, congratulations. Merry Christmas. Well, and they mm-hmm. obviously knew who, they were coming to worship the Messiah. So yeah. like they're looking at the Messiah and be like, wow, that's what? tough. Tough conditions. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> We're gonna go tell everybody about this. Like that doesn't make any. That makes yeah, no doesn't. logical sense. But that's what we. That's what we do with the story and. Movies. But that's what I like about the shift in your perspective. Yeah. You know, be like yeah. you know, the way the story is told. We think of these people as mean, nasty, cruel. You know. Instead, it's more oblivious or normal. Right? Like if it's, you read the Bible and the story through mm-hmm. the lens of like even just going to to like mm-hmm. Jerusalem and Israel, you realize their houses are not even to this day like Americans, right? Mm-hmm. And we we often view Mary and Jesus and we're like, oh my word, what horrible conditions. But realistically, mm-hmm. they might not be in the best of conditions, but they were somewhat normal, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. They were like a first century reader of this, right? Would, would have been like, huh. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful birth. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, the, no hospitals to go to doctor. You had, you gave birth with your family. That's yeah, mm-hmm. the way it went. And so, mm-hmm. um, I think if you want to dig a little bit deeper that the book by Kenneth Bailey, the, or uh, I forget the name reading the Jesus through Middle Eastern eyes. Thank you. I was going to say reading the Bible. We'll, through. We'll put, the, if you just want to read like for Christmas time, um, there's actually a free PDF of chapter one, which yep, is that, oh, that one. Um, great. and we'll put that in the show notes that you can get for, mm-hmm. uh, but if you want the whole book, you can, you can use that mm-hmm. to take you to purchase it. And, uh, yeah. Another option that I've heard that I actually thought was very fascinating and somewhat believable is this idea. So if you, you go away from the, you know, the home, idea. There's a place, it was a home. It was a home where um, shepherds would keep uh, perfect spotless lambs. It was called Migdal Eater. And basically this was the location of the sheep that were set apart to be sacrificed for um, all the old, the law, the Mosaic law sacrifices. And so you needed a perfect spotless lamb. And so when the angels, I heard one scholar explain it like this, basically when a 
when the angels came to the shepherds, they say, you will know because you'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in a manger. And a lot of scholars believe that's exactly what they did with those sheep they would set apart. And so there was a location called Migdal Edar where they would set apart. And what is Jesus known as? The perfect lamb who takes away from the sins what, of the where world. Where was it at again? McDonald's. I just wanted to hear you say it one more time. I mean, I, I think I'm pronouncing it right, uh, but you can I don't know. Google it. I have it. no it's, idea. Someone's going to write it. M-I-G-D-A-L- E-D-U-R. Which, if, you, if you've seen the Chosen Christmas special, uh, la- last year's Chosen Christmas special hmm. at least, or maybe, is it two years two ago? Years, two years, I Two years, the yeah. shepherd. Okay. It's the, sh- the shepherd that kind of launched the Chosen. They pick up on that because they use okay. the swaddling cloth. They kind of like... You you can kind of pick up on those hints with their the cloth and the shepherd mm. and the he's wrapping it in um, the sheep and then and then mm. he's oh he's wrapped in the similar cloth and like they're kind of doing this undertone at least if I remember correctly cool. of 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 some of those things but th- I think that's a really cool um, just perspective of who Jesus is and where he shows up to um, yeah what else what else about the the story is culturally in context that we just pluck out. Uh, so often. Wait a minute. What's your question? What's what's right or wrong about our perspective? What's uh, wrong about our perspective, and what's more of a? I, lo- I love drew your language of the. It's a normal. It's normal birth in that regard sure. versus like a. We kind of like dramatize it in a lot of ways um, in this regard. Yeah, and when we dramatize it again, we keep it so far away from us. Oh, we'd never be like that. But I think like the mm-hmm. real dynamics we're seeing here we can identify yeah. with is just a and i think we try to dramatize it I, I think motivation is because we try to make it like so special yeah but the reality is right. it is yeah. you know in in the normal normalness sense like that god came to us mm-hmm. like that's the specialness of it it doesn't have to be special yes. in the sense of like well jesus was born in the barn, and then all of a sudden, this drummer boy shows up and plays him a song. <laughs> like, right. Well, and the, the special start talking. The yeah. specialness comes through not the process of how he was born, but the process of how he was conceived. Yeah. You know, like the Holy Spirit conceived him. That's what's miraculous and special. Mm-hmm. But we feel like every part of Jesus's life has to be miraculous, and so he was born in the worst of conditions. Mary would barely made it to the barn. You know, we we almost. And we do this with everything, right? Mm-hmm. We catch a fish. It's it's you know, it just keeps twenty one inches. And it story. was really like seven, you know. So I think this is our culture. We like to dramatize things. We mm-hmm. want it to be interesting and captivating. And so we hear this story every year. And so it makes sense when you tell something over and over again to embellish it a little bit. And yeah. I think it's important. Right. What's important is to take what the text tells you yeah or Mm -hmm. what the text doesn't tell you right and so and i Mm -hmm. think what's funny about this is like even people you know christians who've heard maybe maybe the context of the first christmas story more clearly articulated and explained they even like there's pieces of it that linger behind Mm -hmm. uh, from movies and christmas plays because i was talking to Mm -hmm. someone this week about you know and and they just kind of like tongue-in-cheek said you know like well it's kind of crazy you know mary and joseph they struggled finding somewhere to stay and i'm like did they did did they like yeah isn't isn't that what the bible says i'm like Mm -hmm. i don't i don't think so like in luke (laughs) one through seven i don't think it ever says like they struggled finding somewhere to stay. it just simply says she gave birth and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the guest room. Mm-hmm. That's all it says. Like, that's just what it says. It just says there was no room in the guest room. Yeah, it's pretty persistent imagery. I, the the Bible that was done in the History Channel, that dramatization, and yeah. we'll, we'll go through that in starting point and show that. But it, it, it plays into those tropes, you know, yeah. of, you know, here he is banging on door after door. The rain is coming down. <laughs> she's, you know, yeah. screaming, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, 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 Kenneth- and, 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 and I say that that's one of the very good dramatizations. I mean, I mean, in terms of that whole project, the yeah. Bible project does things very, very well, but there it is, you know, yeah. just... Well, I think some of the reasons why we do that is not even necessary to embellish the story. It's because we have a tendency to read the Bible through our lens. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we, we contextualize it to our context, not its context. So, mm-hmm. obviously, if there's no room in the inn... It means the Holiday Inn has no vacancy, yeah, exactly. right? You know, that's our culture. And so some of it is not even necessarily like on purpose dramatization. It's just trying sure. to like reflect on it in the, oh. the culture that we live in. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because yeah, in in that regard, all the words that are used are difficult. Um, in that regard, because there was no room for them in the end, as the KJV, which is what we originally, right. you know, most English readers read in that regard. Um, and so that's really helpful. Yeah. Well, what about the uh, application of this? Like as we were applying it, you know, my application this week to just presented was like, you know, are you close to the heart of Christmas, but still? not embracing it and missing it? Like, have you not embraced the person of Christmas? And my question really for us to just talk dialogue in the last couple of minutes here on the podcast is what are some more practical ways or illustrations that you have seen maybe in your individual lives or with your families to, to slow down and embrace the person of Christmas? Um, obviously, that's more of a heart posture than like, we'll just do this thing and then you'll do it. Check this box. Like, because that's kind of the Op, the antithesis of what I was saying, the opposite of what I was saying, but like mm-hmm. we do need to do some more practices that help us regulate and like, okay, let's focus. It's not about the gifts that we receive, but it's about the person that came to us. Yeah. Um, what are some practical, more practical things that can be helpful in that? Yeah. I think one of the most glaring things about the story of Christmas is not just who came to worship Jesus, but who didn't. Mm. And, you know, we, we, we technically don't know, but we don't, we, we know who did, but there's no recording of who Jesus was staying with ever coming downstairs, ever Mm -hmm. sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do know that people visited their home and worship. So there had to be some form of, and maybe they did. And it's just Luke decided, Hey, I'm not going to record this. Yeah. But I just think this is a good picture of how many of us, like even us who know Christ, we get so close to something and can still completely miss it. And you made that point. And I think about, I'm trying to like just process my mind of how many times I do religious activity, but miss the relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. And God, especially when you're a professional. Right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, (laughs) I can become so numb to Christmas because it's, that time of year where it's things ramp time. up, it, it gets yeah. busy. And yeah. um, I, Jesus, like, I, I just got to remind, like, God came to dwell among us, right? Mm-hmm. To be with mm-hmm. us, to walk with us. How many times mm-hmm. the Bible says he never leaves you nor forsakes you. He walks with you. And I just think this is a beautiful reminder to me that yeah, God doesn't want the religious activity out of me. He wants He wants to know me mm-hmm. and he wants to dwell with me and he he wants to sit in my living room and converse with me and mm. that that to me is more about you know just time and, and and learning to live in this relationship and I think about that with my family like what's best for my kids a lot of gifts or or time in mm. relationship and I think mm. that coming around like we get so caught up in the chaoticness of Christmas that we miss not only Jesus, but we miss the moments with our family. We miss the moments with our kids. And I think that's the biggest thing that I like, after I heard you talking, like it hit me of like just this Mm -hmm. relational piece that I don't want to miss. You know, Karen struggled uh, for Karen, my wife, Christmas is very stressful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just trying to think that she's not stressed by a biblical Christmas. She's stressed by an American Christmas. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, so a lot of things that she just doesn't, you know, want to do don't need to be done. You Mm -hmm. know, so there might be, it might be okay, you know, you know, just to scale back, you know, some of those things you do to, you know, to make space. And when you make space, we do have, of course, a couple of resources, you know, that, um, We've been given out the promised one, you know, which is, mm. and just reading that, it's just a very different perspective on Christmas yeah. because it's really focusing on that Old Testament prophecy. What was the expectation and yeah. you know, the prophecy that's fulfilled in the coming king, the um, king of kings, lord of lords. But anyway, um, you know, we might have to pare back, you know, some of the things, you know, if you're overwhelmed by making all those cookies, maybe you don't need to make all those cookies, <laughs> mm. you know, maybe you don't yeah. need to make that fancy meal. Maybe you can be a lot simpler, you know, and find space for some of those. One things. thing Ashley and I are doing practically, this is really more maybe for, uh, families with kids, but one of my greatest frustrations about Christmas is Ashley and I will spend money on a lot of plastic that eventually just 
mm-hmm. I can't stand and want to throw away. It doesn't last. And when I think about Jesus, one of the things I think about is what he came to give lasts, right? It, mm-hmm. it, 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 it doesn't fade. It doesn't mm-hmm. wash away. And so Ashley and I have made a little bit of a shift. Don't get me wrong. Our kids are going to get a little plastic, right? Because they, <laughs> they like the plastic and it brings them joy. And I'm fine with that. Sure. But one thing we're trying to do is give our gifts our kids gifts that will last. Right. And what what I think about my childhood and what lasts was memories with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we're trying to do things like, Hey, we're going to, one thing we're trying thinking about doing, hopefully my kids don't listen to the podcast. I don't think they do. Um, Malachi's tuning in. What's up, Malachi? We're going to (laughs) try to give them like a two day trip to somewhere that mom and dad can go with them because you know, when they grow older, they'll remember that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. way over the hatch mole that, cake screams about. And, and so we're actually, and I just trying to process of like, what, what, what can we give to our children that will last and have an eternal impact or just an impact on their mm-hmm. lives that yeah. will not fade? Yeah. One principles of gift giving that Rena and I have like tried to do for our kids and then kind of like push the grandparents to do as well is, um, moments over materials mm. is kind of like that's the mantra that we said that's is great. like and there's so science behind that too yeah like there, people, there there definitely is and so like yeah. for but it could be as simple as like for us living in rochester area it's like hey why don't you buy them a uh you know strong membership yeah. or a zoo membership mm-hmm. or take them on it like let's go on a family trip like kind of thing like that where it's mm-hmm. like and then we can that is moments versus like mm-hmm. i got this truck that is mm. going to be th- crushed in four weeks and thrown in the trash or whatever yep. the case would be like um toy truck but but yeah <laughs> I, I i think one thing that really stuck out while you you guys were talking is you know of just those taking advantage of those moments but then brad you mentioned the promise one mm-hmm. um and kids ministry put together a uh, shout out to just maddie oh, taylor even who is yeah, in this Kristen. yeah um it looks like a magazine you know maddie's wh- writing pu- taylor's photography yeah. it's really beautiful. good it goes alongside the promise one uh yeah. it's a 14 day so we're hand- mm-hmm. we handed it out this past sunday uh, mm-hmm. and so it, it can take you up to christmas and you can even reuse that in christmases to come it's mm-hmm. a seek and find yes. it's really well well done mm-hmm. um but just th- put implementing some of that religious activity of like okay let's read the bible and, yeah. and like slow down that can be helpful like our family is is doing uh, a 25 day like we somebody in our community group made for all of our families like uh, a jesse tree a wooden tree that's like decorative and super well done and then little wooden ornaments that are and then put together like a just a book that is like day one read this scripture day two mm. read this scripture mm. and then like little symbols and so it's like okay every night and it kind of sits in our kitchen after dinner we all put our plates up and then like okay let's put the next thing on and now wells is like just turned two so it's like we're not like reading the scripture i'm kind of like doing more of like let me tell you what this one's about like <laughs> this version because he's like next one and he like wants to put like all of them on the tree right now and so i'm mm-hmm. just something that kind of like okay, this is what, this is the reason, you know, the reason for the season, very mm. cheesy, but just something to slow yourself down um, in in that regard. Brad, I love what you said. Maybe it's dialing back. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. If this is stressing you out, yeah. you know, because I, I, I don't want, well, the thing I didn't want to do in this sermon is like, well, I'm not going to bake all these cookies and give away all these presents. And, and like, I'm not going to go and be active because it stresses me out even though some of the active is really good, you know, yeah. like if you're making cookies for the firefighters or serving at the homeless shelter, like all these are really, really good things. And I don't want to say, well, just don't do those things. Cause there's a lot of other consumeristic things that everyone's taking part of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe it's like not do those things and everything you're doing that is good comes out of the heart that is like, I'm doing this out of an, as an act of worship to the King to yeah, celebrate as a celebration. That, yeah. As a right. celebration that Jesus has come. And this is why we're doing this thing. We, we've, we've embraced the person of Christmas and that's why we're doing it. Not because like, okay, this is all the things we do for Christmas and we got to cut them because we got to, it's almost like the Christmas of the cranks, right? We're like, Nope, we're not doing that. Not doing that. Not doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we want to embrace the person of Christmas. And then from that, we do that really good, those really good things that that are, that do come with the season at some level. So Mm -hmm. what's one thing you want to leave people with as we wind down? What's one final thought of, to help them like maybe tangibilize this, or maybe it's a a cultural piece of the story of Jesus uh, that you really want to leave people with one thought. We'll just go around. 
Brad. I know it ca- occurred to me first. It's just totally random. But I have a book on my shelf called The Christ of Christmas by James Montgomery Boyce. I mean, it's a very old book, but it has a number of sermons in it, really, that just give a very different perspective on Christmas. So we talked about, like, your kids men resource, you know, yeah. for the kids, but there are a way to help change our kids' perspective. Yeah. There's adult readings that help our perspective. So there's the promised one, but I, I love that book. Maybe others have other ones. Again, preachers. And what they're doing, like you do, Daniel, is you're trying to break through that familiarity, that routine that you're almost insulated against the mm. message because it's mm. so familiar. But to find someone who can just take it from a different angle, like you did on Sunday, but there's others. I love that book, Christ yeah. of Christmas by James Montgomery Boyce. I don't even know if it's in print still, but just to read that and just find ways to look at it differently. Yeah, I think for me, it's uh, like a gauge. So I just want to get to the end of you know, the Christmas holiday and be able to say, I worship the king. And so I do whatever I I have to do to, to get my heart to that place where I don't, I don't want to get to January 1st and be like, man, I just, you know, I missed Mm -hmm. the moment. I missed the celebration because I was so consumed with me. I want to just get at the end of my Christmas and be like, you know what, this Christmas I worshiped the king. Yeah, I think the thing that really stuck out to me, Drew, was just your statement of like, it was normal. Like, I, I don't know why that just come, that just that is the resonating thing for I me. I say profound things. You think you, you know, say really so, profound yeah. things, and then <laughs> Migdal Idar. <laughs> uh, but like, I think that just really, I'm, I'm hanging on that phrase of like, the way Jesus came into the world was normal, and that was the spectacular thing that mm-hmm. God came in the most human way, mm-hmm. and but He came. Uh, more things you said, like to just be with us. And that's the point of the season is, is God came to dwell with us, to tabernacle, to walk among us. And don't miss the relational aspects of that with relationship with God and other people. Don't, yeah. don't take the plastic in, in place of the person mm-hmm. um, in that regard. Well like, Hey, Ooh, there preacher, right there. The there. The the there. I'm preaching on him. <laughs> so yeah, don't take, don't take the, you know, the superficial for, um, the supernatural. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. We should wrap up. We need up to wrap now. this thing up. We're on fire. But, yeah. We're doing so. We're going to write a whole new sermon series after this. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the thing that I want to hang on is that Jesus came in the most normal way uh, to do the most extraordinary thing, which is just to simply be with us. Um, and we should be with him and uh, make time to be with other people during this season. So that's what I want to remember and leave you with. Thanks so much for listening to this week on A Little Better. We can't wait to hang out with you again next week. Thank you.